Dan Larson here at the photo booth. We're gonna be we're gonna be looking at some PO box mail with some mail stuff. I don't remember what this show used to be called. Uh, all I know is uh, it's been a while since we've done any of this, and uh, I got a bit of a backlog. So we're gonna address some of that uh, here. Look, there's more than I'm gonna be able to get into today uh, in this particular booth session, but I promise uh, that. Uh, we're going to be getting back to some more of this stuff. And you know, I just mixed up all my boxes here. Oh, here's the first one I wanted to do. Uh, this big box here was already in the booth. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it's been a while. We used to do these a lot more regularly and uh, yeah, I would like to get back to it. Uh, but so <laughs> over the last couple of years, uh, there's been some, you know, people have still been sending stuff into the PO box, uh, which if the address isn't uh, on screen or down in the downstairs area, uh, to borrow a phrase, that's our that's our PO box address there, uh, and you can send stuff in if you want to. You don't have to. You can just watch the show and enjoy. Uh, but the the short version of the story is that people have been sending stuff in for the last long time, and uh, I haven't been able to get to any of it uh, with the PO box or with kitchen videos or anything like that. So. New Year's resolution, we're getting back into that, and uh, that starts today. So first box here is from, I wrote it down, first box here is from Mike Profeta. Uh, it's a pretty big box here, and inside, uh, I should probably, I want to take the note out here first. Uh, I never know which order to do this stuff in. Like, the notes are nice, and I appreciate it, and it tells the story, uh, but it's like you don't want to ruin the surprise of what's in here, and uh, I already know what's in here, because I already looked through it a while ago. But uh, we've got a couple of things. I'm going to set this box here, over here. Uh, but then inside we also have a carded Power of the Force 2 Bosk figure. Love this figure. Still love this figure. To me, this one still holds up. Uh, I remember getting this figure when it originally came out back in the days when... Oh, man. Wait, this was just such a magical time to be collecting. I do miss this, this era, the feeling of collecting at this time because... Star Wars was still fun and exciting for me. This is, I'm only talking about my own personal experience here. I still like Star Wars. Uh, I, I just watched the most recent episode, episode three, episode four, Bad Batch, just the other day. Uh, I'm still watching all the stuff and following along. And obviously I collect lots of Boba Fett's and Mandalorians and all those things. But this was different, you know, in 1996, yeah, 1996, there just wasn't, there wasn't a lot of stuff out there. And we had just gotten through the drought. This is 10 years, 10 years since the original line of Kenner Action figures had ended. And this is like wave three or something, you know, it's so early on in the line. And like this Bosk, this Bosk compared to, you know, just the vintage figure that having, having been the only Bosk that was out there forever, like that was like puppy. That was like kitten version of Bosk. And then this was like, oh my gosh, it actually looks like the real dude from the movie now. Like, it's like, I can't tell which one's the picture. It's so accurate. Loved his guns, loved the way it fit. I mean, it's still a, excuse me, I almost said five points of articulation. It is six points of articulation. They added the waist swivel there, but man, I just loved this. And uh, I was working, I had graduated no, I hadn't graduated from college yet. 96, I was still two years away from uh, graduating college. Uh, but my summer job had me working at a like a, a hardware store as a bike mechanic, <laughs> just putting together bikes and stuff and fixing flat tires. Uh, and they also had like, you know, just regular goods. They had action figures. They had like, you know, pots and pans and that kind of stuff. Uh, and so I, it was, I hated the job. I didn't want to be there. Everybody that worked there was nice, but, uh, if you're listening, uh, but I, the best part was that I had first dibs at the action figures when that stuff came out and it was still, you know, weird. I was like, you know, 20 years old, 20 years old and collecting action figures. And it was still kind of like a, shouldn't, shouldn't you have left that kind of stuff behind at that point? Uh, but man, it just, when boss came out, this was one of the really, really special ones for me because I, I you know, I was trying to complete the bounty hunters and to get boss was like, man. And honestly, Bosk is way better than Boba Fett, uh, I thought, at this time in this line, you know. They had started to move on from the buff physiques and started to focus more on, you know, making the, the figures just look good. And I still, I still, I insist this Bosk figure holds up to today. Let's see what else is in the box here. <laughs> Get all hung up on this one figure. Ah, there we go. Dengar. Uh, on the contrary, I don't know that Dengar holds up. This one doesn't look so great. He's he's kind of soft. I mean, he's always been a little soft, little little soft around the edges. Got a lot of round edges there. No no sharp points. Uh, but uh, you know, this one does suffer a little bit from like preposed uh, syndrome. Uh, and uh, I mean, it's you know, it's Dengar. Just so he's already got that going against him. Uh, we got some free bubble wrap. Who else we got? Uh, we also have Zuckus. And I, I want to make sure that I'm on record here 
as this is Zuckus. I, I know that in the original Kenner line, they got the names mixed up and it says 4LOM, not 4LOM, 4LOM and Zuckus, and that's wrong. This is the organic creature. This is the droid, right? So why would, why would the guy, why would the organic creature have the droid name? Why would the droid have the guy name? Is it possible? Sure, it's possible. And you do whatever you want to with your own internal mythology and your own headcanon or whatever you want. But this is Zuckus, and this is 4LOM. So Zuckus, it's correct. Uh, this figure, I, also, I think this one holds up as well. Uh, I, I've never been a huge fan of soft goods, although I do like it on the Black Series version. Um, but uh, this head sculpt looks great. The guns are fun, although this hand uh, does absolutely nothing except for hold the front part of his barrel. He's got to hold the gun in his left hand because that's the only one that's actually got a, a grippy hand. And then we also got a uh, action uh, action frame freeze frame action slide here. Yeah, you can almost see it. There's almost enough light here. It's just the it's the bounty hunter lineup. And that was a cool addition. The freeze frames are really really nice. Oh, here we go. There's the other one. <laughs> the cut. Also got 4LOM there. So, uh, weird paint job on this guy. Never really, I mean, I guess it's 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 there. Uh, but it was just like, huh, you know, after the vintage figure was just all, you know, armor color. And then all of a sudden this guy pops up, you know, looking like he's from the Rust planet. Uh, that was always weird to me. But, man, I love these figures. I still have the whole, you know, slate of the bounty hunters uh, in my personal collection. And this line is so good because even now it's still so cheap. It's still so inexpensive. You can buy these carded figures in places for like, you know, five to 10 bucks a piece, five bucks in many places, depending on the character. You can still get them super cheap. People ask me, Dan, what's a good line of toys for kids? A line of action figures for kids Are they in the Star Wars? This line, it's still super inexpensive. You're readily available. You can get these things uh, in lots of, you know, collectible shops, vintage toy stores, those kinds of things. And it's just a good fun line. And like every single character is in there. And that was the, that was the other great part about it. All right, that's all that's in the box here. Uh, ooh, shots fired. Uh, that's the other great thing about it is that it was the it was the first time you know there was nothing out there since the vintage line and so when this line came out and was so popular they were able to go so deep with characters and you were just getting all the i mean you were getting some main characters that should have been in the vintage line uh jabba's prisoner leia ma grand moff tarkin you know all those sorts of things but then you were also getting the more obscure stuff and then obviously that bleeds into later lines and it just keeps going from that point on till today um, in here is a, this is a pretty nice piece as well. Um, and, uh, the note from Mike here specifically says that he was, uh, intending to build the whole bounty hunter lineup and he's very, very close. All we're missing here is, uh, IG-88 and then of course Boba Fett. Uh, the particular thing about this Boba Fett is that it does have an autograph on there from Jeremy Bullock. Uh, one of the folks that, uh, one of the actors that actually did portray Boba Fett uh, on screen. This buff, buff Boba Fett here. <laughs> what do we got? Full, we got whole circles on the gloves there. Uh, still, man, and this is, I mean, I love this. I love this picture of Boba Fett. Uh, just skinny chicken legs and his short little cape and these colors. I ah, love it. That's, that's, that's my Boba Fett. Look at all these buff dudes. Look at all these buff dudes on the back here. <laughs> so, man, I still miss it. Like for Christmas that year, 95, yep, 95. Well, cause this was like the first figure. I think it was this and maybe, uh, uh, Hoth Han and Lando maybe were like wave two. Uh, I still remember Christmas this year. My mother was working at, uh, a, you know, Ames department store. Uh, and she just snagged the whole line. And I think part of that was partially for her. She was always into, she still is into science fiction and movies. And she's seen every movie. She sees them before I see them. Uh, and I, I, you know, especially back in the day, you know, through the 70s and 80s, a lot of that stuff. I'm like, she she bought this because she thought it was cool. And, and it's in the house. And, you know, we get to play with it. But, you know, she, she likes it. Uh, and uh, I, I firmly believe that's part of what happened here, too. But it, she got me the whole set. Uh, this whole wave one, not the vehicles, just the figures themselves. Uh, and it was just so cool to see Chrome 3PO, the Chrome Dome on R2. And even with the buff physiques, it was just like, man, Star Wars stuff is back. It was just exciting and cool. Uh, and so in Mike's note here, he says, uh, long time listener, first time caller, had every intention of completing this bounty hunter squad uh, that I received from a good friend. Of course, life got in the way and I never did. My friend worked for LucasArts slash Disney Interactive for several years and is himself a massive Star Wars fan. So although I never had it verified, I have no reason to believe that the autograph is fake. Uh, thanks for all you do, and I hope you find a, a loving home. I hope these find a loving home with you or someone you de deem worthy for Mike. So Mike, thank you very much. This is fantastic. Um, I think, I'm not sure if I still have these carded. I did keep 
a couple of figures carded from uh, from this era. I don't know if I kept a whole slate of the bounty hunters. If I didn't, I am going to keep these for sure. Uh, and uh, oh, that was the thing. There's no IG88 because IG88 only came in the Shadows of the Empire two pack with the slightly less buffed out, slightly less posed uh, version of Boba Fett. And I can't remember if that one had the Empire or the Return of the Jedi deco on his armor. But uh, that's also, uh, if this is legit, and again, I have no reason to think that it's not, uh, that's that's my first Jeremy Bullock autograph. So that is very cool. Thank you very much for that, Mike. Next up is Bernie Monsanto, frequent contributor to the P.O. Box uh, stuffs, P.O. Box booth videos. I'm going to move this bubble wrap. Oh, I was going to step on it again. Uh, Bernie Monsanto sent in <laughs> multiple boxes. Uh, oof. Uh, I'm not going to go through them all. We'll get, we'll get the rest of them on a, on a subsequent video at some point in the future. Uh, we're just going to bang through these real quick here. This is, uh, I'm going to assume this is for Greg. Uh, Bar the Adventures of Baron Munchausen on VHS. Uh, full disclosure here. I've never seen this movie. I know I should have. I know I should. And I will at some point. It's, you know, it's, there's so many movies out there. Uh, but I've never seen this. I'll ask Greg to tell me what it's about. I'm sure he's seen it a couple times. Uh, if nothing else, this will probably end up... Uh, we have one shelf on the back wall. The back wall. It's the only wall we have uh, that looks like that. There's one shelf back there. I'm not sure if it's in frame. But it has a bunch of VHS cassettes that uh, Greg was putting a little VHS collection together there with, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of things that were things we've we've covered for videos or just movies he likes, things I like, whatever. Um, and this will probably, this will fit really nice up there because uh, while he does like VHS stuff, uh, he doesn't actually have a VHS player or beta. This is VHS, right? Uh, yeah, VHS. Also in here, we've got something wrapped up in bubble wrap. Like micro machines, something. Yeah. It's like micro machines car wash. I don't think all the parts are here. We are missing some parts. Maybe they're in the. Maybe they're in the the box. Um, I don't remember exactly how this fits together. Uh, but yeah, I think we're definitely missing some pieces. I think there's supposed to be a whole thing here. We'll set that aside and see if the other parts. Uh, show up, but this should be, yeah, Lewis Galoob. That's Micro Machines. It's the Micro Machines maintenance shop, car wash, whatever. Uh, there's a corpse in the box. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> We've also got a box, a bag of stuff here. Let's see what's in this bag. All kinds of stuff. We've got, uh, I don't know if this is uh, Kodos, uh, Kang, Kang and Kodos. Not sure which one this is. I'm not even sure what this is from where it, where it uh, comes from. We have a green Stormtrooper helmet with what sounds like candy inside. Nope, it is a Mega Constructs Halo guy, I guess? Seems like. I'm not gonna put them together right now. <laughs> There's too much other stuff here. Got that, and here we got a Pokeball that looks like uh, somebody dug it out of the mud. And inside we've got, I choose you, uh, translucent um, blastoise, is that right? And this other thing, I don't know who these guys are. I'm not a Pokemon guy. You'll have to tell me in the comments who <laughs> those guys are. I think that's blastoise, right? Did I get that one right? This is uh, no idea. This is a tiny little keychain sized super soaker that should work. It should pump. It should pump water. Throw some water in there. Soak everything down. This is a Z-Bot, I think, or part of a Z-Bot. It looks like it uh, either connects to something or uh, or has something that busted off of it. Oh, here we go. Here's a little Pikachu. Pika, Pika. I don't know if we're going to get flagged for that. Probably not. Oh, we got a cap gun. We've got no idea what this is. Hmm, I don't know what that is. Some kind of ramp, a turtles thing, maybe. Nope, Hasbro 2002. Maybe it's turtles. I don't know. Did Hasbro do turtles at any point? We've got a bomb. 
We've got another ramp, some busted pieces. In here is another one of the same uh, Hero Clicks Halo guys. And then we have a bunch of anime, anime, anime. Say anime or anime characters. Uh, this gal, this girl, this guy, this lady, and this lady. Any any guesses? Let me know. Uh, this this guy I think is from Robotech. Is that uh, is that is that Fokker? I'm not even sure. Things that fall outside of my uh, area of expertise that I have to look up. I didn't I didn't watch Robotech. My friends were into Robotech. I didn't watch. I still haven't really watched that much of it. We got a uh, oh, is this um, constructs? I think and some bits. Get a little satellite. Stick them. Stick them on here. Uh, there we go. I'm sure that's not how that was sold. I'm sure there was a lot of other pieces that went with it. Got a little uh, piece of broken plastic. And then in here, if I pivot you down a little bit here. No, I can't. The camera won't pivot. The camera won't pivot down anymore. Uh, this is, what is this? <laughs> we have a tiny little, let me get this piece of fuzz off of here. We have a tiny little uh, King Ghidorah. A little micro Ghidorah. And then there's a bunch of soldiers. 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 This is the Maisto A10 Thunderbolt stand. But there's no A10 Thunderbolt in here. Maybe it's in one of the other boxes. Uh, little soldiers. Little soldiers. Some of these I think are actually Galoob. Yeah, I think these are Galoob uh, micro machines, guys. I don't even know if the camera can focus on that. It's so tiny. Some of these are definitely micro machines, but others are just like straight up. Just little plastic guys. Uh, man, I don't know. Ghidorah brought some little green aliens with them. Uh, there's a couple of trees in here. And then I do not know what this is supposed to be or maybe what it was. I'm not even sure. Not sure if that's a homie or just some nondescript uh, figure. It's hard plastic. Yeah, it's kind of soft plastic. Uh, but these little soldiers are great. I have a lot of these. Uh, whoops. I have a lot of these little Galoob Micro Machines soldiers, if that's what these are. Uh, I like how they scale. I like having multiple scales of things so that, you know, if I really want a Gundam to look big uh, or a Godzilla to look big or certainly a larger Ghidorah than this, <laughs> if I want them to look big. I like having tiny little figures, you know, to, to, to sell that illusion that those things are, are bigger than they seem to be uh, or smaller, depending on what you want to have there. Trying to make something big look small. Trying to make something small look big. Nice to have options. But also in this box, uh, the previously re referenced corpse. What we got in here? Uh, oh, there's one more guy in here. This, oof, this is a um, Slipstream, I think his name is. Uh, no, this is a Lift Ticket from the G.I. Joe Tomahawk. This just should have gone in the trash. Looks like somebody's dog got it. No need to send in stuff like that. You can just toss it yourself. Uh, we have a pair of feet here that you might recognize, also a battery cover. And then in the box is a uh, Jedi <laughs> corpse. Uh, there's no batteries here, so it's not going to turn on. Uh, nope, like this. Put this in here first. Ugh. Keep your baby Yoda. I've got full-size grown old man Yoda. Uh, I'm going to assume this is the one that's built off the like Furby technology. Uh, and probably has like all kinds of uh, emotes. He's got like real, he has real old Yoda hair. You know, his eyes will uh, open up and his mouth will do. And I'll bet his, I'll bet his ears twitch. This is probably like that Jedi training thing. Comes with a little lightsaber and whatever. Um, so uh, good news for anybody who's in our, uh, our $25 tier where you get uh, blind boxes on our Patreon. Uh, you're going to be getting, one of you is going to be randomly selected to get Yoda. <laughs> next Patreon box. So uh, and say thanks to Bernie Monsanto for that. Uh, we're not done with Bernie though. Let me get all this stuff out of the way. Uh, like I said, Bernie sent several boxes and I apologize it took me so long to get to these uh, what is the date on these I've had these for a while these came in 
March of 2022. Oh, we're going to uh, just almost a year. Not quite a year, but we're getting close. So I definitely have boxes that are older than that. All right, inside here we have a, uh, I don't know what chaos is, uh, what that refers to, but I think, I think this is a shirt. Shirt or a towel? Not sure. Let's see. I hope I'm not uh, ruining a, oh, it's so gross. <laughs> it's been so compressed. I hope I'm not ruining a, uh, priceless artifact here by opening this. Ah, it feels so weird because it's so crinkly. What size is this? Extra large? That's fine. Usually I take a large, but... Oh, it's from... It is a promotional piece from Get Smart. I assume that's the... Uh, what year is this? 2000... Is that the... Destroying the World and Loving It. All right, that's Chaos, the uh, evil organization. Who's in that Get Smart? Was that... Um, Stephen... Uh, Steve Carell, maybe? Was that Steve Carell in that one? I never saw it either way. We have a, ooh, this is like a Mad Ball. I don't know if this actually is a actual Mad Ball. Feels like it. I don't remember the names of the characters. I only had uh, Hornhead, I think was the one. Uh, he had a horn on his head. That was the only one I ever actually owned. Um, I thought it was bigger than this. What does it say on here? Oh no, this says Freaky. Freaky, I can't tell. Freaky something. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. You know, all, all things considered, uh, the material that these things are made out of, that's actually held up pretty well. It's actually not in that bad a shape. We have a, uh, a story image, Love Hina from GameStop. Uh, no uh, familiarity with that. We have a Playmates. Jadzia, Lieutenant Jadzia Dax from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I'll admit I was not into Deep Space Nine that much. I kind of bailed after Next Generation. It's my fault. I, I can't stick with stuff that long. Ooh, very nice. Lord of the Rings Gandalf brooch. Uh, that's definitely something, I assume this is like a Halloween costume thing. Uh, something that uh, Mrs. Toy Galaxy will definitely be interested in. Very cool. We have a Decepticon sigil. That is solid. That's a solid pin. Excellent. That's very cool. We have a uh, Loyal Subjects Red Alert Action Vinyl. And then, what is this? Last piece in the box. Whoa, look at that. That is a... Dragonar I custom or Dragonar one. I'm not sure. I don't know Dragonar. I have no familiarity with uh, Dragonar. Dragonar one one hundred scale. Interesting. I wonder if that's what's in the box. Let's see. Cool. Oh yeah, there it is. I'm gonna get rid of this box because it looks like it's not in super great condition. Yep, there you go. Dragonar. Neat. Look at that art. They do not make them like that anymore, do they? Very cool. Yeah, this is one uh, this one I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. It has that sort of late, you know, post uh post Macross kind of feel. Uh, definitely looks like a lot of other um, mechs at the time. But that's uh, that's pretty cool. Love that old box art. Man, that is just, that is so sharp. Very cool. Very cool. Nicely done. Nicely done, Bernie Monsanto. Uh, definitely some pieces of uh, trash that you probably could have just put in the trash, but overall this is some very, very cool stuff. Uh, I really, really do like this. Uh, this Decepticon logo uh, badge is really nice. It's heavy, and I feel like if I wore it somewhere uh, and I needed a weapon that I could just pop this off my, my lapel and you know, take care of business if I needed to. <laughs> so, uh, thank you again. Uh, like I said, Bernie sent in quite a bit of stuff and there'll be other boxes showing up in future videos here, uh, not too long, uh, from now. Uh, next up and the last one for this video is from Philip Barrera. He is, uh, Phil Bar Toys on social media. Uh, this is a pretty great box of stuff. Uh, let me see if I can read any of this note first. Uh, greetings from, from the Treasure Valley. Oh, I don't want to show you that picture. Oh, I don't want to show you that picture. Spoil the surprise. 
Uh, to thank you for all the entertaining and informative work you've made, I give you these handcrafted articulated resin action figures, which I sculpted, mold and cast and painted myself. Uh, I'm going to hold off on the description of them, except to say that, uh, yeah, this is, if, uh, if you want to check out Philbar Toys, he's Philbar Toys all over the internet here. Uh, I will also say this, uh, the note is dated May 2022, so <laughs> it's possible that, it's possible that either Philbar Toys... Uh, is doing incredibly well and has sold thousands of action figures and they may not also not be in business anymore. So hopefully, Phil, uh, hopefully you are still doing well. Uh, I hope your business did not hinge on <laughs> me featuring this stuff in a video uh, because I did lag behind here. Um, but these are gorgeous. I'm going to open this one right now. So this, according to the note, is Phil's original character. I'm going to stop talking while this plastic is clinkling, crinkling. Very nice. Very nice. This is super fun. Uh, this is his original character. He's got his sword. Uh, let's put his weapons in his hand. It's hands. Got a sword and a blaster. See if we can get that in the hand. Maybe the handle is a nail. <laughs> that's great. All right, that's not going to snap right in there super easily. I don't want to force it right now here on camera. Oh, there we go. Yes, there it is. Blazing sword. This guy stand up. Oh, let's just hold him there. This is his. Uh, this is his very uh, Optimus Prime blaster here. Love it. Love it. That's great. Maybe this will fit in his hand. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Uh, he's got a little bit of his head. I, you know, his head is a little, uh, it's a little Robotech-y. It's a little uh, Optimus Prime torso. Uh, but I dig it. I love the uh, color scheme here. It says this is um, his own design called Galvanite. This is Galva Knight, the green armor called Hideaway. This is one of the first figures from 2019. This color scheme is inspired by forests I hike every summer. Uh, these figures are intended for play. Uh, all they have ever known is desert, so show them the East Coast for me. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so that is Galva Knight. Let's see if Galva Knight can stand here in the background while we take a look at the others. All right. ah, Galva Knight, hang on. It's, uh, it's not Galva Knight's fault. It's my booth. It's not, it's not entirely stable. There we go. All right, let's uh, uh, also in the box here, we have uh, an incredibly fun. I'm going to open this one over here so I can show it to you. This is, oh man, this is really, really fun. This is a Gundam slash Boba Fett design. Excuse me, Galvanite. There we go. Uh, this is uh, Gundam meets Boba Fett as action figure, and this is just super, super fun. This is the on-screen armor, so to speak. Uh, and uh, he's got, you know, one, two, one, two, three, four, whoa, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, at least 12 points of articulation there. I may have miscounted. It might actually be 14. But we got jetpack, perfect with a, a L slot there. Uh, he's got his little uh, hip packs, his hip pockets. Uh, look at the shine. We got some gold, some shininess on this armor. Totally digging it. We've got the V, uh, uh, and what am I trying to say? The, the fin, the V fin here at the top, uh, right out, right on that Mando helmet. And then he also comes with a couple of accessories. <clears throat> I think we got two blasters here. Yeah, we got this blaster and then a more Han Solo sort of style. Uh, smaller blaster. I like him with this small blaster. Yeah, perfect. Look at that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Even better than that, if, as if you thought it couldn't get any better than that, uh, the final piece here in the box from, once again, Philbar Toys. Check him out on social media, please. Give him a follow. This is uh, a similar, a similar Gundam Mando unit but in kenner homage colors look at that look at that blue and orange just pop pop i i've said it before i'll say it a million times i've never understood why hasbro uh whenever a boba fett anything comes out 
They don't put it out in like six different versions, just right out the gate. Kenner, uh, you know, animated special, holiday special, Empire, Return. Now you got the new suit, that stealth suit, the prototype suit. Like, what are you doing? Just every single time you make a Boba Fett armor, you should be making a Kenner homage. Got the red rocket back there. Uh, everything is, uh, this is just super, super nice. And I think he comes with the same two guns. We'll give him, uh, we'll give him the larger blaster here. It's a novel way of doing uh, the hands here as well. Just got like a little slot. I'm sure it was molded around this handle. And then just take it out when it's done. I dig that. That is super fun. <laughs> this is a super great piece right there. That's ah, just a lot of fun. This is, you know, I somebody the other day, uh, I, I was I was I was talking to Paul Harding, the sculptor, uh, and we were talking about the fact that there is this there's this sort of feeling amongst some toy collectors that toys have become too complex, too detailed, and they've lost the the a bit of that simplicity uh, of that sort of cartoonishness, that softness of when they were really, you know, really just intended to be toys. And I, and I, I understand that. I sympathize with that. I get that. Uh, but I also think there's a place for both in the industry. There's, there's plenty of room for hyper, uh, uh, articulated, hyper-realistic photo face printing, you know, uh, looks exactly like Harrison Ford or whoever. Uh, but there is also a place for this uh, in, in both, you know, things that are actually meant to be toys for kids, uh, but then things that are also meant to be adult collectibles. And I think things like reaction figure, right, things like Super 7's reaction figures and the retro collection, they definitely fall into that category. And something like this, to me, does as well. Uh, and then, of course, this crosses over into, e e even though Phil said that this is, you know, cast and, and can be, I assume, uh, produced, mass produced, uh, at least in batches, something like this does fall more into that art uh, piece category. And I dig it. I wish it was signed. It's not. You got to put some kind of stamp on there, some kind of maker's mark, Phil, unless I'm not, unless I'm just missing it. This is great. I love it. Thank you so much for sending this in. Thank you to uh, Mike and Bernie Monsanto. Uh, thank you for watching this. I promise <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get caught up on my mail. We're gonna get to more of these PO box videos. We're gonna get back in the booth here. We got a lot of other stuff coming this year. Uh, so thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with us. Please make sure to like, uh, uh, share this video, hit subscribe if you haven't already, uh, and we'll see you back here in the booth real soon. Later. <laughs>